Good day to all of you. Welcome to our online service. I hope you're with your friends and family as we worship God and take the time to hear God's message today. Do have your Bible, your notebook, and your pen ready later. And have your communion elements ready as well because in a short while, we will be partaking of the Lord's communion. Before we worship God, one thing we believe that's helpful in contributing to our growth spiritually is by getting connected to a church community. We have what we call victory groups that for the season of enhanced community quarantine meets via different online media platforms. So in case you don't have a victory group yet, we're encouraging you to visit our website at www.victorypioneer.org. Click the Connect tab, and once you're there, at the right-hand side of your screen, you can click the Get Connected button. Just provide us your basic information so we can get in touch with you. Now, as we begin our service, join me in a short word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to worship you, even through an online platform like this. Lord, while the, the world may be in chaos, God, we believe in your presence, there is peace, and there is fullness of joy. We pray that you'll be glorified in the things that we will continue to, uh, we will continue to do, and we thank you for your grace and your goodness over our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Your mercy is upon us forever, like waves upon the shore. And you have gone before us through darkness, all victory is yours.
hearts are always for us Unending Outnumbering the stars And faithful as the morning You're with us Your promises to oh, You are good Always you are good Always you are good, Jesus Always you are good, Lord Always, yeah. Always good You are faithful, you are good Always, you are good Always, you are good Always, you are good, Jesus a pen of red rider I am the furnace but you are the fire God oh you burn in me my soul is a place with the glorious theme my heart has been stirred by the love of a matchless
are the author, and I am the story. My freedom when you conquer death to the ends of the earth until my final breath I'm yours. Everything in me, oh. Ooh. Ooh. Lord, you have my. celebrating communion as we continue to worship God. The early church celebrated the Lord's Supper mostly when they were in their homes. And so we're doing something similar to that. Now you can get your communion elements, the bread, the, the juice, uh, but you don't need to go outside to get any specific kind of bread or grape juice. I have regular bread and fruit juice that happens to have grape in it. So use whatever is available to you. All right? Now let me read 1 Corinthians 11, 23, 26. 
Paul says, For I received from the Lord, but I also delivered to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. As a church community, we are called to remember, celebrate, and rejoice in the finished work of Jesus on the cross. We do that with our family members. We do that in the context of a church community. And we do that so that we could be reminded that our salvation is only because of the good news that Jesus came here on earth, lived the perfect life, and yet punished, tortured on the cross so that we would be free from sin, we would be made righteous before God, and we could be with Him for eternity. And He even have left to the foot here on earth. So as we celebrate communion, you can get your elements. We'll start with the bread. The piece of bread that you hold in your hand symbolizes the body of Jesus that was broken for you. Let's pray. Lord, thank you. Thank you for the brokenness that you took upon your body so we can be made whole. Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters. Some of them may be sick. Some of them may not be feeling well. But because of what you accomplished on the cross, we can claim healing. We can claim wholeness in our bodies and in our minds. Panginoon, maraming maraming salamat sa kagalingan na pwede namin matanggap mula sa inyo, Jesus. We thank you and we receive this with gladness. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. You may now partake of the bread. The contents of this cup symbolizes the blood of Jesus that was emptied from his body while he was hanging there on the cross. The Bible tells us that without the shedding of the blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. Let's pray before we receive this. Lord, we thank you. Thank you because of the new covenant that we have in your blood. Thank you, Jesus, because we can stand before you righteous and holy not because of the things that we have done but because of the blood that covers us your most pre precious blood jesus covers us and we acknowledge Lord god that it is something that protects us from harm as well father thank you that because of the blood that was emptied from your body we can be filled. We can live a life to the full. And so, with that, maraming maraming salamat po. We praise you. We honor you. We receive this with glad hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. You may now partake of the cup. Let's continue to worship God by continuing to sing this song to Him.
Thank you that you took our brokenness on that cross. Lord, our life is yours. Our heart is yours, Lord Jesus. Panginoon, binibigay namin ang aming puso sa inyo ng buong buo. Sa inyo lamang, Jesus. Amen. Church, I'm glad to be worshiping with you this morning. And even though it's online, at the comfort of your own homes, Still, we are a church that's called by God to honor Him and make disciples. And even in the midst of COVID-19, we will continue to declare and demonstrate the gospel of Jesus Christ to others. This is the ultimate good news. And so, that's why we are using hashtag Good News 2020 for all our relief efforts to those who are affected by the quarantine this season. We are serving frontline healthcare workers, the PNP, and affected communities through our churches across the Philippines, while making sure to maintain proper sanitation and abiding with the rules implemented by our government. So to know more about our relief efforts, to be encouraged even at the season, Visit victory.org.ph slash goodnews2020. As we continue to worship God through our giving, let me read Malachi 3.10. You know this, it says here, Bring the full tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and thereby put me to the test, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open the windows of heaven for you, and pour down for you a blessing that there is no more need. We're going to pray through this verse in a while, but let me commend all of you. Let me honor you before God. Uh, we are faced with a financial situation here in our country, even as a global community, and yet there are still people who are honoring God with their finances, just like you. There are still people who are generous, in giving and supporting those who are affected by the economy, by the effects of what's happening around us. And so I want to I thank you. I want to honor you before God. And we're going to pray through the verse that I read a while ago. It's a verse that's commonly read in church. You hear it a lot, especially during this time when we're going to give and honor Him with our finances. But I want to speak uh, I want to focus on the promise that's given by God near the end of the verse. He said that He will pour down for us a blessing until there is no more need. Let me pray for you. Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters. Lord, maraming maraming salamat. Dahil alam namin na pupunan mo ang bawat pangailangan na meron kami, na kinakaharap namin niya. Lord, I pray for that businessman, Lord, and his or her business may have taken a hit. Lord, I pray that you revitalize that business, Lord God. Lord, I pray for my brother, for my sister, that because of hindi makapaso, there is lack right now, Lord God. You see that need? Lord, thank you because we can claim uh, provision 
You promised it in your word. And Lord, I pray for my brother, my sister, na in this challenging times, maybe na walang sila ng trabaho, Father, I pray that you would make a way, that you would supernaturally provide for their needs. Thank you, and we believe this can happen because there is nothing impossible with you. You are a loving and generous Father to us. So we bless you, we worship you. In Jesus' name, Amen. Know that we are continuously praying for the prayer requests that you send out. We believe that God hears our prayer, especially when we come together in agreement. That is why we are extending our Thursday prayer and fasting. So you can still join us on April 2 and on April 8. Now get ready. Ready with your Bibles, your notes, and ready your hearts as we receive the word this morning. Pastor June Aguilar. Hi everyone. Welcome once again to our online service. This is the third week that we've been doing this. And I just appreciate God that in spite of the things that we are going through, as a nation, we could still come together to worship Him, listen to His Word, and be ministered to by His Holy Spirit. Just like you, I'm also inside my home. Uh, uh, actually, I'm inside my son's room and uh, just did this setup so that I'll be able to share God's Word to all of you today. Now, just in case you hear some other sounds aside from my voice, it's because I live in a lively community. We have birds chirping, dogs barking, and all of that. But my prayer is that you'll be able to focus on God's message and hear Him speak to each one of us. As we go through our series entitled, The Gospel Explained, I pray the gospel, which is the good news, will be something that would refresh each and every one of us. Tamang-tama to kapatid, na habang nasa bahay tayo, uh, may good news pa rin na nangyayari. Uh, before I continue on uh, with the preaching, first, I would like to congratulate everyone. We are on day 15 of the Enhanced Community Quarantine. And I know that we're not just surviving this, we're conquering this in the name of Jesus, right? Uh, alam ko, medyo mahira, pero by the grace of God. And because we're in faith and we're continually praying, guess what? The hand of God is with us. His presence is, is with us. And whatever we need, God is able to provide. And because we believe in a living God, He is journeying with us. Kasama natin si Lord. And we will all come out of this victorious, right? I also realized that as we are in, in quarantine right now, there are benefits in quarantine. Some of you probably saw this in the news a few days back. And here's a picture of what Metro Manila, or at least a, a portion of it, looks like before people uh, were confined inside the home. Bago pa ma-isolate yung mga tao, bago pa pinagstay sa bahay, ito yung itsura dati ng Manila. Today, after several days of the quarantine period, this is how it looks right now. Same location, but a stark difference. You could see the blue skies, the clouds. I know it's taken on a different uh, time of the day, but I want to highlight something here. All right? uh, this dark portion right here, it's actually the carbon uh, emissions coming from vehicles, coming from factories that would em emit smoke. In short, pollution. Okay? So, dahil nasa bahay tayong lahat, uh, wala gaano sa sakyan sa labas, walang mga factories that are uh, operating right now. Listen, the environment is given time to heal. And look at this. It's recovering. It's it's improving. And so, may maganda rin nangyayari kahit naka-quarantine tayo. But more than the environment, uh, I really appreciate God that families today can come together. I could just imagine the moms who would, who would uh, say before na kung hindi lang sana ako busy sa trabaho, kung wala lang sana kung ganang ginagawa, sana napagluluto ko kayo ng pinaka-expertise ko. Well, guess what? Moms can do that right now. Uh, the family could eat together three times a day, sabay-sabay kakain. Dad is not out working. He could actually stay home, spend time with the kids, talk to his sons and daughters. And, and just like this picture, just enjoying time together. And so one of the things that I really appreciate uh, as we are now in quarantine is our time with our family. So this time, we are forced 
to think about things that are really important to us. And I want to talk about that today. Ano ba yung mga bagay na sobrang importante talaga? What's important right now? And what should you and I focus on? Ano ba yung mga bagay na sobrang importante sa buhay natin na dapat yung talaga yung pinagtutuunan natin ng pansin? Now that we have time to think, now that we have time uh, to just look around us, assess where we are, ano ba yung dapat nating ano, uh, i-appreciate? Now, today we're going to look at uh, Romans chapter 2, uh, verses 17 to 29. I'll, I'll go through it. Uh, I won't read the whole uh, uh, verses, but uh, as you follow along, uh, you would see here Paul talking to the Jewish believers, right? And so, he was talking to believers na, na, and, and he was uh, telling them, what is important to you? Okay, so for the Jews, there are things that there are several things that are important to them. Okay, so what is important to a Jew? First and foremost, his heritage. That's his identity. More than more than the culture that they have is their identity as a nation and as an individual. For a Jew, it's very important yung ano yung lineage niya, where he comes from, his ancestry, his his family tree, so so to speak. And many Jews, even up to today, can trace their lineage back to the time of Abraham. And so, that is something that is important to them. Yung what, what they received, what they possess, and what they are able to pass on to the next generation. And for the Jew, they all know that. Okay? They are the chosen people of God. And they are separate from the rest of the world. They have an identity that they could uh, proudly uh, say of themselves that, Kami yung pinili. Hindi kami kagaya ng iba. We are chosen by God. We have a connection with the Father in heaven, the creator of heaven and earth. And so they have that. And 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 Paul is zeroing, zeroing in on that. He's talking about that. In Romans chapter 2, verse 17, he says here, But if you call yourself a Jew and rely on the law and boast in God. Can you imagine that? All right, let's let me stop there for a moment. You're a Jew and you know the Romans are ruling over you. You're not the world power. You don't have a king. Uh, okay, You are subjects to a, a, a stronger nation. Uh, you are not the most intellectual group of people. And yet, Paul is saying, you are boasting in God. Ano yung pwede nilang ipagyabang? Let's look at the Amplified Version. It says here, but if you bear the name Jew, and rely on the law for your salvation. And boast. Boast in what? Boast in your special relationship to God. And that's it. They have a relationship with God. They have that connection with God. And so, even though they are subjects to a stronger nation, it doesn't matter. Because they can look back and say, Hey, okay, you are above us right now. Not because you're stronger. It's because our God is allowing this. But, any time that God wants to change things, He could turn things around quickly. God has done that in the past, in our history. We could look back. We have a king named David and he's a giant slayer. And he was a powerful king. Nations around him feared him. They all paid tribute to him. And we have that uh, as part of our lineage, as part of our heritage. And yes, the Greeks, they are proud of their wisdom, their knowledge, their philosophy. They have uh, Plato and Aristotle. But doesn't matter to us. As Jews, we have someone wiser. We have King Solomon. And, and the Bible says that there is no man on earth living and would live uh, in the future who would be as wise as him. And he's part of us. And, and aside from that, we have prophets who could who could, who, who could talk about the, the, the words of God, not just the wisdom of man, but the very words of the living God. And so they have this as part of their heritage. And so for the Jews, that is very important to them. Now for us today, uh, we're not Jews, of course, obviously. But then again, we, there are things as well that we are proud of. Some of us, we're proud of our accomplishments. Some of us, we're proud of the, the successes that, that uh, we have uh, accomplished or the careers that we have now. For some people, they're even proud of their religion. And you could hear that. Uh, you're with your family right now. I pray that you're not arguing 
I pray that it was not hard to gather everyone to join in our service today. I, I pray that nobody is saying, ayoko yan, mag-iba tayong religion eh. Ah, mas okay kami, mas okay yung pastor namin, mas magaling yun, or, or mas okay yung church namin, or mas malaki yung church namin, and all of that. I pray that we're not comparing with one another. And I, I pray that we're, we're listening to the words of Paul that yes, your heritage is important. Yes, your religion is important. Yes, your success, your career, your, your achievements, they are Im important. But guess what? There are more important things. And we're going to look at many of them today. All right. So again, uh, looking at the life of the Jews, their heritage is important. But next to that is the rituals. The things that they do, they are important as well. Now, I did some research about this. For the Jews, they have uh, what, what you call uh, halakha. I don't know if I pronounce it right. Halakha is a Hebrew word that talks about the Jewish law. Alright? So, uh, yan, yung, yan yung mga bagay na importante sa kanila na pag Jew ka, dapat uh, it's incumbent on you, it's, it is expected of you to observe the law. Alright? Now, I want to share another word. Uh, the word is mitzvah. Okay, which means commandment. Now, the plural form of mitzvah is mitzvot. Okay, and so, uh, yung Jewish law can be divided into two. Right? Two commandments. Kumbaga, two uh, portions or parts of the commandment. The first one is called mitzvot de oraita. Again, I, I don't know if I pronounced it right. But these are the commandments coming from the Torah. The first five books of the Bible. And again, this is very important for the Jews. Can you imagine? There is a total of 613 commandments that you should know. But aside from knowing, is that you should observe, you should obey for the rest of your entire life. Can you imagine living a life like that? So lahat-lahat yan, from the way you would wash your hands, because of the ceremonial uh, uh, cleansing and all of that, there are several things kailangan lahat yan ino-observe mo. Uh, otherwise, and do, they do understand this, that if you disobey, you would incur the wrath of God and His punishment later on. Alright? So that, that's the mitzvot, the oraita, based on the, uh, the Torah. And there's another part of it. It's called the mitzvot de Rabbanan. Uh, again, uh, um, pardon me if I mispronounce it. But the point is, these are the commandments coming from the teachings of the religious leaders, the rabbis. And again, it has, uh, well, not as equal weight, but of utmost importance as well. Now, uh, if you are a Jew performing rituals, uh, paying obedience or doing obedience, showing obedience to these commandments, is very important. Now, I don't want to downplay or I don't want to sound like I'm criticizing the Jews. Because having a standard and, 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 and showing obedience to the law, that's very important. But then again, what they're missing out, according to this letter of Paul, is that they have the external matters uh, aligned and yet the heart is not there. Look at verse 21. It says here, You then who teach others, do you not teach yourself? While you preach against stealing, do you steal? Verse 22, you who say that one must not commit adultery, do you commit adultery? You who abhor idols, do you rob temples? What is Paul saying? Paul is saying that you are good with your words. You are good with proclaiming. How about the practice? You are good with the external things. How about the inside? What's happening inside of you? How's your heart? Okay, I want to say this. God is not impressed with external performance because He is more concerned about the attitude of our hearts. More than the things that you are, you are doing, yes, God appreciates that. Yes, God can see that. Yes, uh, God approves much of it. But listen, far and beyond that, and what is more important is the attitude of our hearts. God is looking at that. He is more concerned about that. We say this over and over, relationship, not religion. I appreciate religion. It has brought us closer to God. It has made us aware of the presence of God. Dahil sa religion, alam natin na may Diyos at dapat na mag-commit tayo sa Kanya. But more than that, God is after relationship. 
So aside from the external things that we are doing, how's our relationship with God? I'm not talking religion here. I know you're proud about your, your heritage, your religion. And some of you, you're thinking, uh, pinanganak akong ganito, mamamatay akong ganito, ito yung religion ng parents ko, ng lolo't lola ko, ng mga ninuno namin. Uh, it has been passed on to me. It's up to me now to carry this on and pass it to the next generation. Yung mga anak ko naman, pare-pareho kami dapat. And I understand that. Uh, I came from the same uh, family who upholds that. But listen, more than the religion, more than the things that we are doing, uh, the good things, the charitable work and all of that, it's our relationship with God. Once again, I want to say this. God is not impressed with external performance because He is more concerned about the attitude of our hearts. More than the rituals, God is looking for something. And what is that? Again, what, uh, Paul is saying, your heritage is important, your rituals is important, but what should be important to you as Jews and for the rest of us as well is the attitude of our heart. Okay, so, it is, sabi ni Paul, uh, sa mga hudyo na kausap niya, mga kapatid, okay, uh, as a fellow Jew, okay, I understand yung minana natin, I understand yung religious practices and activities natin, pero wag natin kalimutan na yung mga puso natin. And it is something that should be important to us as well. Verse 29, the last verse, says this, But a Jew is one inwardly, and circumcision is a matter of the heart by the Spirit not by the letter. His praise is not from man, but from God. Paul is saying, a Jew, someone who is chosen, someone who is connected with God, is not a Jew externally. He's a Jew inwardly. That's you and me today. Circumcision, which is an external action, an external sign, that is important for the Jews, but Paul is saying, he's taking it a notch higher, he's saying, it's not a physical circumcision, it is a condition, a matter of the heart. And I want to emphasize this part right here. By the Spirit, not by the letter. Which means, it's not something that we can fabricate. It's not something that we could come up with. It's not something that we could produce on our own. It is a work done by the Holy Spirit. Not by the letter, to emphasize the letter of the law. It's not by obedience, it's not by doing your best, it's not by going to church, having a religion, doing charitable work, praying, and all those things. Those are, again, important things. But far and beyond all of those is our relationship with God. My prayer is that today we would look at our very own hearts and allow God to speak to us. Kumusta ba ang puso natin? Let me end with an illustration. I have here a uh, hamburger sandwich. All right? And I know some of you, uh, you're already hungry, gutom na kayo, or maybe some of you are craving for a hamburger. Uh, I, I, I just show this because I, I want to make a point. Okay, so here's the point. All right, so I have here a, a hamburger sandwich. It's wrapped uh, uh, excellently. Uh, it has the right weight has the right wrapper, has the right look. If you're beside me right now, it has the right smell. <laughs> Amoy hamburger talaga. And once you open it, okay, uh, you'd be greeted by this uh, uh, bun with uh, sesame seeds on it. Wow, look at the size of that. Man, alright? So, it has, again, it has uh, the look, it has the smell, it has everything uh, that it needs. Uh, to be a hamburger, uh, I could smell the, the, the lettuce, I, I could smell the tomato, I could smell that there's onions here and, and mayonnaise. Wow! Alright? But then again, if you'd open it, what would you see? Okay? And uh, as you open it, something is missing here. Alright? What is that? Ano yung kulang? The hamburger patty. <laughs> Everything else is here except for that. The most important part for it to be called a hamburger is missing. Yung palaman kapatid. What am I trying to say? Okay. Uh, it has the right wrapper, right smell, right weight, right, right looks. But if the patty is not there, it's not a hamburger. 
sandwich. What's the point? Point is, we call ourselves Christians today. We call ourselves believers of God. But listen, if Jesus is not right there in our hearts, we're missing the most important part. And today, as we are all quarantined, you have time uh, that you could spare or time that you could use so that we could all go to God, come to Him, just allow Him to speak to us and allow Him to open our hearts today. And I pray that as God would expose our hearts, we would begin to see, is something lacking? May kulang ba? Kung gusto may mga puso natin, sana hindi kulang. Sana yung Holy Spirit, tulungan tayo para mailagay ko ano yung kulang. And so I wanna uh, invite all of you today to pray with me. Just bow down your heads and close your eyes. And let's just pray together. Uh, Lord, we just come before you today. We're asking for the Holy Spirit to minister to us. God, I pray na you would speak to each and every one of us. Lord, whatever is missing, whatever is lacking, God, I pray na Lord, ipakita mo sa amin yan, Panginoon. I pray, Lord God, na uh, mangusap ka sa bawat isa. Lord, I pray, Lord God, na bukod sa relihiyon at mga ginagawa namin para sa iyo, Panginoon, makita mo na mayroon kami totoong relasyon sa iyo, Panginoon. At Lord, tulungan mo po, po kami, Panginoon, na uh, to grow that relationship that we have with you. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that we would know you more, we would connect with you more, lalo na, lalo na, especially at this time, that we have more time for ourselves to seek your face, to behold who you are, and to be drawn closer to you, lalo pa kami malapit sa iyo, Panginoon. The same way, Lord God, I want to pray for those who are joining us. Maybe this is the first time, or maybe, I don't know, maybe uh, this is the first time that they heard a message like this, and I pray, Lord God, na for all of us na we belong to that category, Lord God, and uh, now you have spoken to us, and now it makes sense. You're after relationship, and we're making a decision that, Lord, today, I want that. Gusto ko yan, Panginoon, magkaroon ng relationship sa iyo. And so for those people who have that in their hearts, I want to pray. I want to pray for you right now. Just once again, bow down your hands and close your eyes and listen to my voice. So maybe you could follow along with me importante, let it come from your own heart. Just bow your heads. Uh, let's pray. Lord, I pray. Uh, uh, Panginoon, patawarin mo ko sa lahat na nagawa kong kasalanan. Na-realize ko, Lord God, na yes, nakatulong na malaki sa akin yung reliyong ko, pero kulang pala yung Panginoon. May mga ginagawa akong tama. Uh, may pagkukulang din ako, pero beyond that, Lord God, ang habol mo is relationship sa akin. And I just pray, Lord God, right now, Lord, na patawarin mo ako sa lahat ng ginagawa kong pagkakamali, binibigay ko po yung buhay ko sa iyo, Panginoon. Lord, I pray na magkaroon ako ng relationship sa iyo. At tulungan mo ako, Panginoon, na makasunod sa iyo all the days of my life. Panginoon, maraming salamat sa binigay mong pagkakataon sa akin ngayon na makapagdasal ako sa iyo. And I pray, Lord God, na this will be the start, Lord God, of a wonderful journey with you, God. Salamat, Panginoon. We honor you, God, in Jesus' name. Uh, once again, I want to thank you for joining us uh, today. I pray that God has spoken to you. I pray that you would spend more time with God. And I pray that you would keep your heart pure and holy and acceptable before God. And more than anything else, that you would grow in your relationship with God. God bless you. Uh, leave a comment. If you made that prayer, I want to connect with you. Uh, maybe you could send me a private message if you have questions. Or maybe you need more prayers. Or if you want to clarify something. Just message me and I'll be glad to answer or maybe, who knows, even give you a call if you would want that. Again, thank you so much. We'll see you again next week. God bless everyone. Thank you once again for joining us in today's service. I pray that our time of worship and the message that you just heard today have ministered to your heart so that God can use you to be a blessing to your family and friends as well. Just a few reminders before we end our online service. If you are not yet part of a church community, please do visit our website at victorypioneer.org, click the Connect tab, and once you're there, you can click the Get Connected button 
where you'll be asked to fill up some basic information so we can get in touch with you. Now, online giving is also available through our website, victory.org.ph slash give. Or you can also give via GCash. And if you have any prayer requests, please send them through victorypioneer.org slash prayer request because we are praying for you. We're believing with you for any breakthrough, healing, or whatever that you have been praying to the Lord. May the Lord bless you and use you to become a blessing to others. God bless you all.